The truth of the matter is that we are the builders of this movement. We are the ones in the streets risking our lives going against the system. We are the policy creators and ground shakers. We are the ones who organize the survival programs and mutual aid for our people. We are the ones doing the educating, revolutionizing, and transforming of the masses. We are the ones that give every hashtag meaning, purpose, and direction. And we are the ones who will lead us into a future where freedom is not only possible, but our reality. The time has come for us to evolve from where our lives matter to where our lives are truly free. Welcome to the Black Freedom Movement. We know how this movement started. We know when it started to go left. And we know how to get it back on track by getting back to the basics. Grassroots, community, organizing. So let's get back to our blueprint for black unity by doing it how Marcus Garvey did it, like how MOVE did it, and like how the Black Panther Party did it. By feeding, clothing, housing, healing, educating, training, mobilizing, and organizing the people towards one goal and one purpose, black freedom. So if you want to connect with other like-minded black people around the world and build a real black liberation movement, go to the IBFA.org and tap in. What if we had the power to bring every black leader throughout history together in this day and age? What could we accomplish? What if we brought the radical mobilizing of Dr. King together with the unapologetically black organizing of Malcolm X? What if we used the political ideas of Fannie Lou Hemmer and put it with the successes of Julius Nyeri, Patrice Lumumba, and Maurice Bishop? What if we created an entirely new economic system based on the philosophies of Dr. Claude Anderson, Muammar Gaddafi, and Thomas Sankara? How many black Wall Streets do you think would exist today? And what if we created an organization in the transformational ways that Ella Becker did, or even a movement like Winnie Mandela did to end apartheid? How strong of a people would we be if a movement or an organization like that existed today? Now what if I told you that we've already started? So one day we were thinking, how do we fund a black freedom movement in a way that's both ambitious and empowering, yet transparent and accountable to the people? And then it hit us, the Black Freedom Fund, a fund that's for the people, by the people. The Black Freedom Fund will work like this. Each month, we will put out a plan for how and where the money will be spent. Then we, the people, will put money into the fund. Grassroots black organizations and collectives will be able to apply for grants through video, forming a level of transparency and accountability. A committee of activists, organizers, and movement elders will be tasked with choosing the grantees and working with them to ensure that they succeed. Each grantee will give monthly, quarterly, and annual reports back to the community, showing exactly who, what, when, where, and why the money was spent so we can operate in trust and keep building the movement our people deserve. Sounds dope, don't it? Yeah, we know. So let's launch it. Click the link, check out the vision, and put your coins in so we can continue that freedom work. The Black Freedom Fund is brought to you by the International Black Freedom Alliance, a grassroots organization started out of Ferguson, Missouri, who's dedicated to liberation of all Black people everywhere.
we want to do is be free, be free. Can you tell me why? Every time I step outside, I see my people die. Oh, why? I'm letting you know that it ain't no gun that they make that can kill me. What up, what up, what up? I'm getting text messages. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Black Revolution Theory Education, Tori Russell. This is kind of corny and fun. I like it. But uh, <laughs> I got to get that voice together. Somebody playing with me in the house. Um, What's up, y'all? Um, Stepping in, teaching for Balmani and Zasada. Um, they couldn't make it. We've been kind of building on a lot of political stuff. A lot of homeschooling stuff. I know they run a homeschool down south, so we've been really pulling together. Um, so we're gonna start with the check in. Um, on me myself, I've been feeling good. I've been feeling real good. I've been feeling real inspired. A lot of our members are taking on different roles and tasks. Pretty soon, we'll be bringing people into committees and working together digitally. Um, and even possibly coming together in person. So that's that's really getting out of this, getting out of the way of COVID. You know, some people have taken the vaccine, some people haven't, some people um, you know, gonna mask it up, some people, you know, they're just gonna be outside with it. So um I always say, well, black people, we live in two pandemics anyway. Our first pandemic, uh, or the one that we currently know about is COVID nineteen, which is real. Um it killed people. I mean, I almost killed my mama. Um, so, I, you know, I can't even crack a joke or be like, it ain't real. It don't hurt black people. It's real. But it's some things that we can do to protect ourselves and some things we can do um, to try to get rid of it and keep our immune system, uh, you know. So I ain't finna go into the Dr. Sebi kind of thing. But, you know, if, if, if you know, you know. Um, and then second, black people have always lived in the pandemic of white supremacy. So white people has always affected us, um, trying to kill us. Um, try to take us up out of here. So um, if COVID exists or not, we still got some stuff to do and we still got to get free. Um, and, you know, I can't have white people in control of my, my, my health care system anyway. So we got to kind of figure some things out. So we as an organization going to keep building, keep moving. Second, we had a great conversation with our, our brothers and sisters in Brazil. System. It's like the Quilombo Collective. I can't really translate it. Um, they'll probably correct it later. Um, down in Brazil, they have a collective. They did a festival, um, you know, around Caparilla, around, damn, what's that called? Macara? I don't know. It's a dance, Black African dance. So I was really inspired. We had a conversation, kind of chopping it up. And one big thing 
um, that the young person told me while we was on the on on the video chat was that there are coons down in Brazil, people that are selling out the revolution, selling out our people. So coon is a universal word. Um, it's universal now, and people calling it out. So I I laugh, and and, and that made me that kind of boosted my joint. Um, so that's really me. Uh, you can put in your comments how you feeling. I see Anaya on. I see Damini. So what's good to Anaya? What's up with me? I, I like what's good. What's up, Damini? What's up, Anaya? IBFA members. Uh, people putting in work. Uh, Brother Damini, he putting in on the black agenda, creating a black agenda for 2022. Um, so these House Negroes, these Coons, Congressional Black Caucus Negroes, these white Democrats, um, and all these people that's talking a good game, we can hold them accountable to something on our standpoint, um, something that makes sense for us. Um, today, I'm going to break it down, and we're going to get into something around politics, but really it's just about people having a misunderstanding of what's going on. We keep having these same conversations about uh, what we trying to do. When I say we, I mean black people. And I'm talking about black people who are trying to do things in the community. Um, so I just really wanted to kind of chop it up. I know Hill Scholar, uh, Director of Revolutionary Black Education, uh, we had a good debate around this. We was on a uh, we was on the spaces um together and these negroes is getting out of pocket they may along here what's up fam um uh, good to see you may i do a lot of work around prison reform she part of ibfa she part of oh i don't want to misquote it uh she put it put it in the comments so i can shout it out um she worked on um and a brother here, I forgot his name. He was facing on death row. Uh, they actually, uh, I don't even remember. Did they execute the brother? I know we got a lot. We got Strickland. We got Johnson. Uh, we got a lot of people. Missourians for alternatives. Yeah, Missourians for the alternatives to death penalty. Um, I know they had a, a rally. I think it was for Ernest Johnson. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I know a lot of work around the country has been around um, Julius Jones, my brother, was falsely accused and on death row um, in the state of Oklahoma. I mean, really, a couple hours, an hour before, um, they took him off of death row, but they did not commute his sentence. They did not grant him clemency, and they did not pardon him and let him out. So. He was staying the rest of his life in jail. Ernest Johnson, yes, he was executed. Also, uh, wrongful conviction work. Thanks for support always. Um, sister, she'll be putting in work. You know, she got the emails going. She'll do the petitions. We share it in our organization. We push it out. Uh, that's one thing about the International Black Freedom Alliance. We're an all-black organization. Uh, we don't really care if you're part of other organizations. We don't care what your work look like. Uh, we ain't gang banging on the set or none of that. Uh, we just want black people to work together and work towards the things that we know will get us free. And so um, some work is, to, is, is you know, what, what others would call harm reduction. Uh, but uh, on this side, we'll say, you know, some people, what some people call harm reduction, we would say saving people lives. So, um, Michelle is a part of trying to save people lives on the other side of the wall. Um, I actually talked to Reggie Clements a lot. Um, he had another brother who was on death row for a murder he did not commit. Um, he recently, a couple years ago, took a plea bargain, um, hoping um, that they will free him, um, taking the plea bargain. Um, they did not. Um, and he's currently doing 31 years for a murder he did not commit. Um, he wasn't uh, accomplished to the murder. 
any of those things. And the person who actually admitted to killing those people uh, was killed in prison. Um, and so these are the things that we're fighting against. And it's just a spectrum of work um, that we as a people do. And we also have to have a spectrum uh, that all work is not going to be the same work. Um, but we do have to have a clear understanding on the spectrum of what the work is. Um, because like a uh, hood scholar, like Travis said, we was in this clubhouse last night with Torrin Walker, um, Faithful Black Man Association, um, some other people. Uh, and they was talking about like freedom. You get to talking about revolution. We need a revolution. And it's something that, you know, black people say all the time, no matter where I've been in the world, where we are, we talk about revolution. Um, but in actuality, most of the time we're talking about reform. Um, just to keep it a buck with you. And so um, we got some slides. You know, I'm a fan of slides. I went to school for education. I'm not like the hood scholar. I ain't no doctorate. Um, but I do a little something, something. So I, I made a couple slides because I know people have to have an understanding and visuals make it clear. So first we got reform. So reform is to make changes or improvements to the current system. Um, so I'm going to leave it up and say it again. Reform is to make changes or improvements to the current system. All right. So. If you are trying to improve the conditions of anybody, any position. So that means if you're trying to improve the rights of, of inmates, and the, the rights of workers, the rights of women, uh, the rights of children, uh, you know, uh, protesters, activists. If you're trying to improve the rights or make changes to the rights that are pre-existing um, and keep the system intact um, for the way it is. Um, then your work is a reform work, right? And some things um, you can't have revolution in. Um, uh, I, let me change that. You can have rev you can have revolution on any issue, but there are places in which where people believe that they can tinker with it or change or make changes in certain areas, where in which it will improve the conditions to show that the system or that the process can work just in a better way, right? That's 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 two ways. That's one of the two ways you can go about it. Or, no, that's not it. Or it's a revolution. And so a revolution, and I, uh, I messed up, to, yeah, to make changes to the current condition, to the current system. Forgive me for the typo I was speeding. So, um, is to make changes to the current system. So, so if, I mean, my bad, if you're trying to change the whole system, if you're trying to change the whole system, that's a revolution. If you're trying to make changes inside the system, it's a reform. I want to be very clear because if we get off track, we will believe one thing or the other is one thing or the other. So we in the groups, you know, everybody been there. We've been on Facebook and people will scream out, we need a revolution. We need a revolution. We need a revolution. We need a revolution. And when you ask them from what to what, what they say is we need better police. We need better prisons. We need better, you know, health care. Right? But what they're asking for is not revolution, but reform. They're just trying to make changes of the pre-existing system pre-existing institutions, right? And to make it work better for the people in society, right? I'm not a fan of most of their work. Uh, there are things that can be reformed in the system um, that will allow us to see certain things. Um, but for the most part, um, we need a whole entirety, entirely new system. Um, we need a system that works for us. And so on the spectrum of who we are and where we are politically, most people are a few things politically. Just to, to, to be clear, before we go into this, uh, I got my text. So that means I'm not doing, I'm not saying the right thing. Um, 
like, share, comment, <laughs> which I feel is like kind of corny, but say it helps the algorithms out. It allows people to learn um, so people can kind of, kind of have an understanding. And the more we share and have a unified understanding, um, the more easier we can move forward together. Because if we sit in a movement, we sitting in a meeting, um, we sitting in, 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 you know, in a group chat, and we talking about changing something, and people are screaming revolution and they mean reform. And then I come in, or now you come in screaming, you know, revolution. And those two words mean something totally different. Then that's a big problem. And it becomes a big, big problem when we go out because now you're talking about holding the system accountable, changing the system. Um, and really, uh, what, uh, what Malcolm X would say if you're not really to die for your freedom, um, you know, to take the word revolution out your vocabulary. You're not talking about that. You're talking about reform, and we need to just say that. Um, so in my understanding, it's really four ways or a few ways to do this on the political spectrum. I know everybody talk about you on the left, you're the right, you're leftist, you're far right, you're fascist, um, you so on and so forth. But, you know, to me, it's only a few ways and a few things um, that you can be, um, just depending on the spectrum. So I'm going to start where everybody know. Um, I'm going to start somewhere where I know people believe that, know that they're not, or most people will say they're not, um, which is conservative. So conservative, um, you know, their job is to keep the system the way it is and the way it's always been. Hey, squeaky door girl. <laughs> uh, to keep the system the way it exactly is. So um, I'm trying not to give an example. Don't you do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to wait so if you're trying to keep the system the way it is if you are really if you Mitch McConnell if you, if you Mitch McConnell one of these Republicans usually Republicans or conservatives um, but really if you Joe Manchin um, if you Cinema from, from Arizona uh, shit if you Jim Clyburn for real, you are conservative. You want the system to work and run the way it's always been running. Um, and you want to keep it that way. And so a lot of times we get caught up on Republican or Democrat, but we're not asking the person or we're not saying, hey, when it comes to our health care, is this person trying to keep the system the way it is? Right. Meaning, do we have universal health care or not? If we don't, then there's somebody. Um, if somebody don't want to give us universal health care, don't want to give us Medicaid or Medicare for all, um, and don't want to go to a single payer health care system, that person is conservative. We just got to keep it a book. Um, that's really what it is. Next up, what some people would call a liberal, promote social welfare inside the system, current system. Say it again, a liberal is someone who promotes social welfare inside the system. Meaning, uh, and, and to me, it's two ways to go about this. If you are conservative who have some liberal understandings, that, mean, that means that you believe in subsidies for corporations, subsidies for farms, subsidies for banks. You believe in welfare. Um, probably from the rich people, from what people call the one percent, or for business or the business class, or petty bourgeoisies. You believe in this. You believe that they deserve tax breaks, tax credits for rich people and corporations. And so, you're really what some people call a moderate conservative, but you're still on the what they would call the right. You're still on the right. Um. And that person is still conservative, but they just believe in some kind of improvement, some kind of social welfare for rich people. If you are a liberal on the other side, right, um, that means you believe in probably public housing. You believe, you know, you believe that people should should be permanently living in transitional or, or public housing where they never own it. You believe that people should get food stipends. 
um, where they can go into, you know, businesses and grocery stores to feed themselves. Um, you believe in those kind of social programs. You believe in affirmative action. You believe in quotas where people get hired. Uh, and those are social programs, social welfare programs that is meant to, uh, in their eyes, to improve some of the conditions for our people. Um, yeah, uh, and I'm going to put that on the screen because that's a fact. Um, Michelle said there are a lot of black conservatives, though, that don't believe that they are. The black people who hold to Euro traditions, standards, and respectability politics, basically wrapping colonized ideas up in African and black aesthetics. Umar is a good example. Now, you made a good point. Um, some people say. And that's another thing. What Michelle said is true. You you can be a conservative and wear dashiki. You can be a conservative and wear hair wrap. You can be a conservative and speak Kiswahili, uh, believe in Yoruba and all this other stuff. Um, but when it comes down to the systems that govern us, um, that create laws and that create policies, you can still be conservative. So don't be fooled just because somebody got on the dashiki. Don't be fooled because they put their fist up or call themselves a black nationalist or pan-Africanist. You have to listen to their ideas. And if their ideas sound like the same shit that you've heard all your life, then guess what? They are they either conservative or really a liberal conservative or what they call a moderate. Um, other people believe that they are liberal on the other side. Like they believe in a better kind of social program, right? Like housing. Like I don't believe um, in permanent public housing. I don't. I don't believe that people should be getting uh, welfare for the rest of their life. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Um, if you can't feed yourself, um, there should be some programs where um, not only do you get some food, but you also learn how to grow food and you get space and land to do that in a house. But I'm just, you know, I'm probably not on any of these kind of scales, but we're going to go there. Next up, progressive. Someone to gradually improve the current condition. Come on now. Let me, let me, I'm going to say this again. Progressives. These are people who, you know, we got to keep it a buck. These are the people who, these are the uh, Ehan. Omar's, these are the AOCs, these are the Rashida Talibs, these are these people are progressives. Um, you know, the Congressional Black Caucus, some of them are progressive. They are progressive, and but all that means is they want to gradually improve the current system over time. Over time. How much time? Shit, I don't know. To the end of time. But that's why they're here. They are progressives. They are meant to improve the system bit by bit and what they would call a pragmatic or, you know, a step-by-step -step plan to change the system. So um, the problem with that to me is that progressives um, will let you die before they even make an improvement um, that is even worth talking about. So i make an example of it. So uh, we have been, well, my bad. I'm not, I don't consider myself American. I'm black. So um, the United States of America have been talking about making improvements to the infrastructure for at least 60 years. We have to make improvements to um, subway system, uh, public transit, roads, highways, bridges, uh, pipes, water pipes in your house, the pipes that carry the let you know the gas into your homes. Uh, we need infrastructure for not only technology but for how we communicate across the country. These are uh, infrastructure deals and things that we've been talking about uh, for 50 and 60 years. Uh, this week, uh, Biden and the Democrats have put together a, a Build Back Better, an infrastructure plan. 
Um, that in, one, it includes more money for the police. So, you know, that's what progressives voted for. I'm just keeping it a buck for you. Um, but they believe that it is now time to possibly improve the highways. And a lot of this is like speculation. So now they have to go out, do a survey and a study on how to actually improve the infrastructure. And so we've been talking about improving it, or the United States have been talking about improving the busing and the roads and things for 50 and 60 years. Um, now we're going to do a study probably for the rest of the year, and there will not be nothing fixed or vastly improved. Um, and it definitely will not improve um, directly the lives of black people. It might have some trickle down, but trickle down economics don't never get to us. So this is what progressives do. And I'm going to put it up again. Progressives, they believe to make gradual, to gradually improve the current system. Everything I'm talking about is people wanting to keep the system in place. The system is white supremacy, by the way. Uh, we could talk about economic systems of socialism or um, capitalism. You can still have white supremacy and racism run that. We could talk about switching from patriarchy to matriarchy, um, but white supremacy would still create what manhood is and what womanhood is. Um, we could talk about women's rights, but they ain't talking about black women. We can talk about black manhood and, 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 and all these other rights and prison reform, but all these things are trying to maintain the current system, we have to keep it a book. And since these are the ways in which they're talking about, it's a fourth one that people can confuse themselves. It's just like revolution. When people say, I want to change the entire system, change it to a new system, right? They're really saying they want to make changes or improvements to the current system. People use this and say they are these things, but they're not, right? And the word is, oh, let me see if I got the slide. The word is abolition. People say that I'm an abolitionist. I'm an abolitionist. Abolitionist is someone who wants to completely destroy the old system. Okay, so their components or a system, they want to destroy it. So if someone says they want to abolish the police, that means they don't want no more police. Anything below that, even defund the police is not abolition of the police. It does not mean they're abolitionists. People can say that they, they, they say, people say, I'm an abolitionist of jails. But ask them, do they still want jails to exist? They say, yes, that means they believe in reform. They're not an abolitionist. This is a spectrum of people, which really confuses people. Um, they may want to do the most changes. They may want prisons to look totally different. They want they might want prisons to look like um, you know rehab centers or job training sites, right? Um, but is it still a prison? There's those are the questions that you got to get to. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't have a slide. I thought I downloaded it, but I didn't. So last but not least is you know to me it's the worst kind of person. Um, when people are trying to make change. Um, and that is a centrist. A centrist is a person who holds moderate political views of the current system. I want to be clear. I'm going to read it again. Centrist is a person who holds moderate political views of the current system. They hold views. They don't do shit. They hold views. They are spectators for debates. Um, they like to hear lots of dialogue and people chopping it up. Um, but when it's time to do something, they are moved by whatever the fuck the people going to do. They don't really have no backbone. So, you know, to me, those are, you know, the Obamas. Obama is a centrist. Um not saying that he's not against welfare. Not saying he's not for welfare. It's just, you know. Let's see if the Democrats got the majority or let's see what people going to do. These are the ways in which you can see. So if someone is standing still doing a debate or standing still when it's an uprising, they are a centrist. Um, or what Big Mama would say, they fence ride. 
They can go wherever the wind blow, baby. They just trying to stay in the middle. They don't, they, you know, they don't want no trouble. Um, they ain't gonna hurt nothing and they ain't gonna let nothing die. Those are the spectrums. And so I'm gonna use these examples, a liberal and a conservative. I'm gonna go slow. So you don't want to be a centrist in times of great conflict. Um because what happens is you look like an enemy to the people that's trying to change the system. Because uh, you ain't in, you, you, you're not even, you're not on the side, you in the way. When people try to change the system, uh, what happens is, is they, 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 they promote better or, you know, just little helps of social welfare, what they call social welfare, on Europe, they would call austerity programs, things that, you know, kind of help the people. Some people call now they got neoliberals and all these things, but they're the same difference. So um, they ain't trying to they ain't trying to set nobody free. They just want you to have better conditions. Uh, conservatives want you to stay in the same fucked up condition that you've been in. You know, that's, um, you know. And there's things outside this, like Trump, you know, fascist, that's far right, that's beyond conservative. They want to take the shit back in time. Um, you know, and then you got progressives who want to gradually improve the system, right? And these people give you a little something, you know, uh, you know, we won't, let's say we don't think anybody should be locked up that's black. Um they would say, well, we'll let out marijuana offenders. Then they'd say, we had let out nonviolent drug offenders, right? They'd, they'd try to, you know, piece by piece, and this might take 10, 20, 30 years of work. You know, people have been screaming for a federal holiday around Juneteenth. It's been, people have been working on this 30, 40, 50 years. Um, we got it. It don't really come with nothing. It's no acknowledgement of um, enslavement or reparations or anything, but progressives will count that as a win. And so we can't be fooled by this. And I'm going to give you a couple examples, and I'm going to try to use the examples that we have uh, so that we can have an understanding of uh, of what we kind of doing. Let me look it up. Um, so I'm going to use the one that we've been using. So first and foremost, before we go to these examples, uh, everybody that's on, do anybody got any questions, any points of clarity, you can put them in the chat because uh, I'm going to break down these examples because uh, it gets better uh, and it gets clear. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not like Jesus because, you know, you can argue if a person fictitious or not. But um, I like to talk in parables and analogies. I like to take the shit out of theory and bring it to practice. I like to bring it to people where they can kind of fully receive that joint. So uh, we're going to say prison. So if we take the idea of prison. Uh, prisons, right, is they are prisons do not rehabilitate people. Um, they are literal, uh, you know, cages for human beings. Um, they don't improve your skill. They don't improve your mental uh, stability. Um, they do not teach you um, how to change the system, um, nor do they teach you how to be self-sustainable, nor when you get out of the prison or jail, um, do you get full citizens' rights, um, nor do you get to even engage in the social programs or the social programs that progressives and liberals want to give you. Um, you are actually banned from them. Um, and so um, a conservative wants to keep the prison system exactly the way it is. So if prisons are full of people who are being raped, families um, have to pay high exorbitant prices to talk to their loved ones and to see their loved ones. If people are not getting rehabilitation, people's mental health is going down in prisons. And that means conservatives want to keep it just the way it is. Okay. Liberals want to create social welfare inside of prisons. So they will want you to have, pro they will want you to have programs 
where in which you can learn how to uh, hmm, make jeans, be a firefighter, um, learn to, you know, learn law and all of these things. That's what they would do. They will, um, they will have you in there doing, you know, paralegal work and all these other things. But like I said, the liberals mistake is when you get out, you cannot be a lawyer if you're a convicted felon. When you get out, you cannot be a firefighter. When you get out, you cannot work at Levi's. So what's the point of having me doing these social welfare programs inside of prison if I can't even participate in them shits when I get out? That's to make the liberals feel good. They feel good about seeing somebody doing something that would improve their life if the system wasn't fucked up. And since they're not trying to change the system, they're playing the game with you. Progressives want to gradually improve the current system. And so if we equate this to prisons, they want to gradually improve the condition inside the prisons. Make it make sense. Okay? They will say things like, we need no solitary confinement. Now, you still got to go to your cell, right? Or they say no extended. And so they have been on that and you say no, no solitary confinement. And then you'll end up getting four hours a day of solitary confinement. These are what they would call, you know, you know, progressive ideas, liberal ideas to improve people's well-being. And like that means, say make license plates. Knowing damn well when you get out, you can't work at the DMV. But, you know, they felt good when he was doing it. I'm going to read this comment from um, Shell. I actually had a bit of debate with our prosecutor about what abolition means. It definitely means the end of the system that oppressed and subjugated us. However, it doesn't mean that we should open the prison doors tomorrow. Abolition is about creating communities. Where there's equity, support, self-sustaining, and opportunity in every aspect of society. Therefore, jails, prisons, police force, and other institutions of control would not be needed or have a place in our world. Hmm. Let me read it. I can't see if I read that. I can't re I couldn't even read the whole um comment. But I too have had a great debate with our prosecutor. I had one with Wesley Bell in the county. Um, you know, this is last year. Next year is last year being a prosecutor. Um, and that's what's up. I appreciate that. Um, and I had one with Kim Gardner, our city prosecutor. Um, and they don't understand what abolition means. So, um, you know, one, Wesley Bell... He know exactly what abolition means. He anti abolition. He he pro police. He pro prison. He pro jail. Um, he pro police brutality. Um, he's pro police terrorism and, and police harassment um, and illegal search and seizures and stop and frisk. He for all that. Um, and the rest of it from Michelle is crime is not about people doing things just to be bad or cause them others harm. Crime is about survival, trauma, mental health issues, lack of opportunity, and education. So once we get the place of being able to exist in healthy ways, criminal system will not have anyone to enslave. Hmm. But I will ask the question: if a prison exists. They're going to put black people in it. So, and they're going to do it unfairly. Period. Um, so, if police exist, police going to put um, citations and fines and economic hardship on you, and they're going to arrest you. Um, if prosecutors exist, and prosecutors are judged by you know, conviction rates. And they don't have a full spectrum of money, meaning um, when Wesley Bell lies, say, I'm going to put all these social programs and mental health things in there, he doesn't control the budget to even do that. Um, so 
it's not even out of his spectrum. So he just went out there and bold faced lied to people. Um, in the city, it's the same thing where it's really nothing you can do inside of jail because you're still in jail. Um, that's a, a system problem. So if a prison ex if, if a prison exists and a mayor exists and a governor exists or a president exists or a senator or anybody exists um, and white people exist, they're going to put niggas in jail. And so that's why we have to be very cautious of having these things because now we're going to have a, a, a conversation about these jails. It's kind of like the Angela Davis um, thesis around her book, Are Jails Obsolete? And to me, to ask the question is like, uh, that means somebody believe in jails. So to me, Angela Davis asking the question, let me know she's not an abolitionist. Um, or are they obsolete? I get the intellectual argument. Um, but they never served the purpose in the first place. Um, and that's the thing. When you have a society like Michelle talking about where people are going to be traumatized. And as long as the system going to traumatize people, they're going to create people with mental health conditions. Um, and it's going to be people with a lack of opportunity in it. Um, and a jail exists. They're going to put people in jail. So, you know, we can chicken, egg, cart, horse. But as long as one exists, the other's going to exist. You know, or they just have to go back to killing black people. So either way, um, it's, you know, and that's really the, the, the deepest, hardest problem about it. Um, and that's why we got to have, that's why we, we want to kind of be clear about where we are. Next. And last is not last, but a centrist. So if we're talking about prisons, a centrist will stand there and watch people debate. They're gonna have a moderate moderate political view. Moderate means just a little bit. You know, like uh, you know, this like a moderate little bit of salt, a lot moderate piece of sauce on your on your chicken plate, uh, you know, you know, a little, a little lemon pepper shake on, on, on the wings. Um that's moderate, a little shake, you know, but a little shake don't get it right. Um, you know, a little freedom, ain't no such thing as a little freedom. Ain't no such thing as a, a little bit of oppression. Uh, so we have to be very clear about what the centrists, what the Obamas, um, what those people, what the Jimmy Carters have been and are um, in our political system. Um, you know, uh, uh, not even a lot of courses, but what most of our Negro, you know, Lance, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms and other black mayors, um, they are centrist. Um, they're there however the wind blow. And they only give opinion if pressed. Uh, you know, some people say, you know, you better off having a centrist um, because at least you can move them. But um, you talking about power versus power. So you got to have mass power to out organize the progressives. Um, and that's the thing. Um, the abolitionists of us, we have to organize. We got to out organize the liberals who going to say we need better conditions in the jails. Um, we got to out organize the progressives that say, no, 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 we have to be pragmatic. We got to take our time at it. And then we got to out organize the conservatives that's going to be screaming, keep the goddamn jail the way it is. And when we have these kind of conversations, we got to understand that, right? So you, you're a revolutionary. If you're a revolutionary, you know you, you got to or out organize the conservatives, the progressives, the liberals. Before you even get to this one, you move this one. Once you move this one, you got to move. You got to out organize this one. This ain't your friend. This ain't your friend. These people in your way, and this person, damn sure you. This your open enemy. These people right here, they ain't your open enemy, but they your enemy. Like like Muhammad Ali said, you my enemy when it comes to my freedom. And then you're going to come back to the centrist. Meaning, I'll give you an example. Uh, 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 and since we talked to the homies in Brazil, uh, Lula in, 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 um, in Brazil, uh, he was a centrist. He could be moved by mass amounts of protest. 
mass amounts of political organizing, people crying out in the street. That's why people liked him, because he was he could be moved emotionally. He could be moved with protests and marches and actions and petitions and things of that nature. That's why people like those people. But you only like those people because you can make some changes inside the system. But it's not until you get to the revolutionary part where you find these people to be a double problem. So you can start with them and then you got to end with them. Then you got to take them out flat out. Um, And that's, you know, my understanding from revolutionary understanding. I'm going to give you all one example, one more example, um, because this is a better example. Because. Excuse me, I'm going to take a break. Drink my water. Drink more water, family. Because a lot of times we get these examples of, 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 of conservatives, progressives, liberals, neoliberals, neoconservatives, moderates, you know, fascists, all these things, all these definitions, which are cool, right? But we have to apply them. Too many, too many Negroes living in theory somewhere in their head, what the idea is, what that mean for me. I live in the projects. Make it make sense in my house. Is the, is, is the price of rice going up? Yes or no? And why? So, and what the hell should be done about it? I'm going to give you all last example. And this last example is slavery. Slavery is a clear cut way. And I feel like people in the comments and people later on can really read this, see this, and really understand what I'm talking about. Slavery, chattel slavery, U.S. chattel slavery or Caribbean chattel slavery um, and chattel slavery um, in South America where people was getting beat, um, people was getting raped. Um, You couldn't get out of it. Uh, Sometimes you couldn't even buy your way out of it. So, you know, when people say, oh, it's about capitalism, about money, mm, it's really not. Because you, if you can't buy your way out of it, um, then there's something more above of, of money, and that's power. Um, these are the ways that they enslave black people. Um, your kids was born into it, and ain't nothing you can do about it but fight, kill massa, um, burn down the house. And so we take this idea of slavery and what I just said, the system is slavery. Where they can rape you, you you don't have money, you don't get paid, your kids can get raped, your kids can get enslaved, your wife, your husband can get raped, Um, you don't have your language, Um, you can't speak your language, don't know your name, and all those things. And that's the current system. I'm going to say that's the current system. If that's the current system, do you want to keep that? You can put yes or no in the comments. Um, I don't think anybody would say yes to keeping slavery as it is, right? So conservatives, though, will want to keep slavery. I'm going to say the joint again so people can can fully understand what we're talking about. Conservatives want to keep slavery exactly the way it is. That means they want rape. They want you to lose your name, lose your religion, your language, your culture, your kids can be sold. That's what they want to keep. Just to keep it a buck with you so we're not confused. Conservatives will want to keep slavery exactly the way it was ran. Okay? It's going to get you. Liberals will want to give slaves better conditions in slavery. I'm going to say it again. Liberals will want you to have better conditions as slaves. Meaning what? I mean, we can play the social program all day, right? Meaning, liberals would say, yeah, you got to be a slave, but how about we have a free how about we have a um, um, housing program for the slaves? How about we have a water? Uh, since they, the slaves deserve water, right? That'd be the campaign. Um, they, they, they uh, we need some kind of health care system, or, or you know what? Um, you know, maybe the women should work in the house. That could be a part of the program where we can help the slaves out 
um, and have a better program. This is um, this is what liberals will promote if if the issue of slavery, because they want to promote social welfare inside the system. They're not trying to change you. They don't want you out of chains. They might change the the chains from metal from iron to rubber, but they don't want you out of them chains. Okay? And we got to put it there. Progressives. Progressives want to gradually improve the current system. Meaning what? They're going to they gonna, what? They're going to say, man, they would, progressives would, ad, would advocate for, um, you know, less work hours for the slaves. Over time, they say, you know, if you've been a slave for five years, you you know, you shouldn't have to work 12 hours a day. You should work 10. And if you get to eight, then, you know, you should you get to nine hours. That's the shit a progressive would say. And that shit, and it, it might, and it might take them 20 years. So we got to be clear, you know, uh, you know, uh, these are the things that some of the, some of the people what we call, um, you know, like Abraham Lincoln to me would be a progressive. He got a quote. I just showed my son this quote uh, that uh, you know, if, you know, Abraham Lincoln quote was if I could, if I could free, if I could save the Union and free all the slaves, I would. If I could keep the Union. And keep all the slaves. I would. I would do anything to keep the union. This is Abraham Lincoln. This this radical, what they call a radical Republican, or what they would call a, a a progressive. So he wasn't trying to give black people their full rights. He just said, "I don't want you in chattel slavery no more. Put them in jail in the slavery. Not in the traditional way." Though. These are progressives. And last but not least, you have a centrist. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to put that back up. A person who holds moderate political views of the current system. Flip-floppy. On the fence. Mr. and Mrs. Neutral. Uh, wait and see. Uh, 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 they say shit like, let's hear both sides. So if the issue of slavery is the issue, then what are we talking about? What's who you you want to hear the side of the slave and a slave owner? For what? See who got the best intellectual argument? No. Political theater for people because he want or he or she wants other people to chime in. He or she or they and them want other people to chime in. And that's I'm gonna say that point too. You can be a part of the LGBTQ community. And be a conservative. You can be a progressive person in the LGBTQ community. You can be a liberal part of the LGBTQ community. But when it comes to black issues, time and time again, the LGBT community are centrist. They hold moderate political views when it comes to prisons, when it comes to police. And when it comes to slavery or the treatment of black people, they become real moderate when you ask an LGBTQ community about black people getting reparations. They become real moderate. You can be trans and be conservative. You don't believe me? Caitlyn Jenner, uh, who used to be um, Bruce Jenner, you know, father of Kim Kardashian and all the Kardashians, is running as a Republican in the state of California, a conservative Republican, um, based on what Caitlin is saying um, about her political views. I don't fucking know. Maybe people shouldn't be concerned about that. We should just be concerned about what's your view on reparations. Cause that's where the shit come all down to. Like Damini said, well, you, you, um, we got to build back better plan without reparations. 
How, Sway? How you, what are you building off of? Where are you building from? If it ain't got reparations in it, black people shouldn't touch it. My humble opinion. And, probably, and not even probably. It's really the humble opinion of the majority of black people. But majority of black people either can't vote or don't vote. But, you know, we might cover that next week. Uh, Shell said it. Um, and I and I hundred percent um second this notion. Um this is 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 the facts. It's the LGBTQ LGBTQ IA plus community. I'm gonna add all of them to you. Um is a white organization, always has been. They put up black face as the representatives, but they don't push for black issues. The SGL folks I fuck with. But don't fuck with the LGBTQ organization and their politics are black. I'm not up on the SGL folks. Um, but you know, that means said black power started the pride movement and they even try to steal the narrative. Um, a lot of black people don't know that a black woman kicked off the pride movement, um, Marsha P. Johnson, um, with the shits. Same gender love, okay. Yeah, so, um, but you know, um, you know, if, if black people knew that a black woman uh, started the Stonewall um, rebellion and was fucking up the police and started a riot because the white LGBTQ community was racist against her and the Puerto Rican and Dominican um, drag uh, queens that was putting on the shows, they was like, yo, you want my entertainment, but you don't give a fuck about me as a person. I ain't bet I'm gonna turn this motherfucker up, right? Um, and then when they got into it, they called the police. And then she got to turn shit up, you know. Shout out to Marsha P. Johnson. Cause real niggas do real shit. Um, she never buckled, she never turned her back on black people. She always helped black people. Um, you know, but she died poor and they just threw her away. She died in the streets. Um, fucked up. Um, and so we can't allow our people um, that did it. Yeah. Um, and I said, I thought it was a straight gay lesbian alliance. Oh, that's how I ain't technically mean it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's actually same gender loving. Uh, I think it was created, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle. I think it's created by black people. Black people started creating a uh, same gender loving um, from a black perspective, um, kind of, you know, not an Afro-centered or African-centered perspective, but a black uh, Western perspective of understanding sexuality and those things. And to differentiate the fact that I may be sexually interested in people, but I am dumb people politics fucked up over there. Um, and I like the clarity. I fucked with it. I just, you know, I wish every city had um, um, black pride. If, if you know, if people going to do it, um, do it black. I don't give a fuck what you do. Uh, to be honest with you. Just do some hella black ass shit. Um, you know, stop going over there with, you know, progressives and liberals and centrists and shit. Because police pull up. They don't fuck with you. Um, you start getting pulled out your house. They don't fuck with you. Your cousins and them getting locked up and shit. They ain't got nothing for you. Um, and when it's come time, really, for reparations for black people, and specifically only black people, um, they ain't got shit for you. They ain't gonna vote. They ain't gonna vote with you. I tell you that. Because if you say, hey, "Look, we not supporting this person," and you shouldn't either, and I don't give a fuck who on the ballot. Um, they ain't gonna roll with you because they interests supersede yours. But you know, that's some education some Negroes gonna have to go through. But just a review, family. Um, so that we're clear. Stop saying revolution when you mean reform. Stop saying revolution when you mean you want to make changes or improvements to the current system. Okay. Stop saying you want to uh you're progressive 
when you when you saying you just want to gradually improve the current system, that shit ain't cute. That shit ain't something, you know, that ain't something to be proud of. All these Negroes, especially, in, you know, in these major St. Louis, St. Uh, St. Louis, D.C., Baltimore, Kansas City, Atlanta, Chicago, all these Negroes, so I'm progressive. You just want to gradually improve this current system over time. You want to improve white supremacy? Where the fuck they do that at? Please. Stop being a liberal. Stop promoting Negroes being in public housing, and we never gonna have public, and we gonna never have permanent housing. Stop saying you want people to have welfare, you know, hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars a year in in welfare and food assistance, but you don't want us. You're not gonna give us a farm. You're not gonna give us a community garden. The same money you can use that for. You can, you know, put community guards. You can plant plum trees and apple trees all through the hood, all through the projects, and people be a lot, lot more comfortable. And 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 and, and stop being a centrist. You know, and shit going down. Get in. You know, stop saying why these. You know, uh, I agree, but I don't agree with the looting. I don't agree with the rioting. I don't agree with, agree with the burning shit down. Or, you know, you know, I would be out there if what nigga. Just go out there then. Go out there and don't do what they do. But don't, you know, don't be no snitch, though. Just watch them do what they're going to do. Let them cook. Um, And then for the Jim Clyburns and the rest of you Negroes, you blue blood so-called Democrats, um, you Joe Manchin Democrats, and you Joe Biden Democrats, really. Um, y'all some conservatives, man. Y'all want. Y'all want prison to be the same. Y'all want the police to be the same. And if slavery existed today. Y'all would want slavery to stay just the way the fuck it is. Because y'all not revolutionaries. Y'all want reform. Y'all want reform. All right, got some comments. Let me go. Let me see what y'all talking. Let me see. Shit, many black orgs are not open to same gender loving. I have friends in KC who told me about the new Black Panther Party and this new org are not very open to queer black people. We got to unite them no matter what and stand together. Oh, you know what? Um, Michelle, tell them pull up to the International Black Freedom Alliance. Um, I'm with the shits. Uh, we all with the shits. We not really concerned with none of that shit over here. Uh, we already in it, you know. So if you come to destroy the system where black people pull up, um, if you're trying to build a system where black people can feed, clothe, house, heal, educate, protect each other, spend our money, build black economics together without exploiting each other, uh, I don't care if you same gender loving, I don't care if you pan African, I don't care if you ADOS, I don't care about none of that. Um, pull up, slide, connect, and build. You know, let them Negroes do that. I don't know about that with the new Black Panther Party. Um, we we just got some people from the new Black Panther Party, um, and they ain't had no issues with it. So maybe that was a few people. Um, but we should have some struggle inside of it. And if not, pull up to the IBFA. You know what I'm talking about? Come put in that work, though. You know, don't come over here because you just, you know, because you mad somewhere else. Uh, come over here and pull up and work. Work on this black agenda. Work on stopping police brutality. Work on reparations. Shit. Work on growing some food. Um, shit. Work on how to shoot your gun and, and aim it at the right people and protect our people. Pull up and work, work. Because we work over here. Come come get our political prisoners out. Come work on getting Reggie Clemens and other people out. Uh, that's our work. Um. Yeah. Yeah, they ain't yeah, most organizations well most organizations don't really do much. You know, I, I made a tweet yesterday. Um people got mad. Um some people got happy. More people got happy than mad. So um, you know, most organizations just book clubs. Most organizations just do this talking shit. Um they do study groups and they, you know, they do that and they do petitions and you know, you're gonna go on change.org and you're gonna do that. Um but that's it. You know, they might do some voter turnout, but they ain't gonna create no agenda. 
They're not gonna hold them people accountable. They're not gonna groom no candidates. Um, they're not gonna work with black people to create our own political parties. You know, they're gonna sit and chop it up. You know, they ain't gonna burn, they ain't gonna burn shit down and they ain't gonna tell a white man if you do something wrong, we all side with it. They're not gonna do that. No. So um, you know, just be different. <laughs> Definitely connect. Um, you know, if, if you know, I I joke is if you tired of um I guess our new joke is if you tired of, you know, your leaders, you know, all in the videos, all in the cameras, all in the commercials, um, you know, selling uh, selling you Levi jeans, um, you know, uh, getting endorsement deals and shit. And, uh, you know, going out kicking it in Hollywood more than they with the people. Um, they come to the IBFA. <laughs> come to death row, Nick. Uh, and, and see how we get it in over here. So that's really it for this week. You know, I appreciate y'all. Um, if you haven't shared, share it. Um, send it to a homie inbox, um, you know, and really chop it up. And if you got some comments later on, throw them in there. Uh, start the debate. You can go on the YouTube and, and, or, yeah, go on to the YouTube and, 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 and debate it, and then we'll come back with it. You know, this is what we call decolonized December. So all December, we're going to be breaking down shit from a high level to our level. Um, you know, we're going to break down these isms, ologies, and ist, and we're going to get to the point where we have an understanding of what colonialism is, what conservatism and, and neocolon. We're going to have an understanding because we can't move forward using the word revolution, and we mean reform. Uh, you know, we talking, we, we calling people freedom fighters, um, and they ain't nothing but activists, you know? So, uh, you know, those words mean something. Those actions behind the words uh, mean something. So I know I do, I do a couple of things. We might do power, privilege, Influence and access. I don't really know, but you know, put in the comments what you want me to teach on next week. Um, we're gonna chop, chop, chop it up, and pretty soon we'll be expanding. Um, so it won't just be me or Bomani as a sada, it might be Travis, and um, it might be another sister, it might be a brother from the UK, it might be people from Brazil. Um, we expanding. Um, what we building is what we call the Black Freedom Movement, we're building a global movement, we doing really what Black Lives Matter took credit for and what other people say they do on paper. Um, we actually building that shit in real life and, and it's humbling and it's beautiful. So if you want to be down with that, if you want to see that, if you want to feel that, um, if you want to do what the Black Panthers did, if you want to do the things that you know in our community that's worked and that gets our people free, you already know, uh, pull up to the IBFA.org you know, click on a link, work on politics, community building, whatever you want to do, you know, with the people. We do it together and we do it all the way to free because we believe that black people can be free in our lifetime, not not 100 years from now, not 50 years from now, shit, not even 25 years from now. We, I honestly believe we can be free, fully free with sustainable system, all black system in the next 20 years. Um, and that shit can start in the next five for real. Um, we can perfect it over the next decade or so. So if you believe that black people can do it all ourselves on our own, then go to the website, become a member, check your email, please. Or I'm gonna be texting you or somebody Jamila, somebody gonna be texting you like crazy. Um till we till you till you plug in and type in and get in this work. So without further ado, I'm gonna say I love y'all. Finna go out, uh, you know, cook me a little dinner. It's my night to cook something. So I'm trying to see what I'm going to cook for the kids in here because um, the revolution starts at home. Love y'all, family. To next time, next Thursday, 6 o'clock, same time. Share it. Watch it multiple times. Get them views up. Share it. Subscribe, all that other shit that they say. Um, but do something black this week until I see you next week. Peace.
The truth of the matter is that we are the builders of this movement. We are the ones in the streets risking our lives going against the system. We are the policy creators and ground shakers. We are the ones who organize the survival programs and mutual aid for our people. We are the ones doing the educating, revolutionizing, and transforming of the masses. We are the ones that give every hashtag meaning, purpose, and direction. And we are the ones who will lead us into a future where freedom is not only possible, but our reality. The time has come for us to evolve from where our lives matter to where our lives are truly free. Welcome to the Black Freedom Movement. We know how this movement started. We know when it started to go left. And we know how to get it back on track by getting back to the basics. Grassroots, community, organizing. So let's get back to our blueprint for black unity by doing it how Marcus Garvey did it, like how MOVE did it, and like how the Black Panther Party did it. By feeding, clothing, housing, healing, educating, training, mobilizing, and organizing the people towards one goal and one purpose. Black freedom. So if you want to connect with other like-minded black people around the world and build a real black liberation movement, go to the IBFA.org and tap in. What if we had the power to bring every black leader throughout history together in this day and age? What could we accomplish? What if we brought the radical mobilizing of Dr. King together with the unapologetically black organizing of Malcolm X? What if we used the political ideas of Fannie Lou Hemmer and put it with the successes of Julius Nyeri, Patrice Lumumba, and Maurice Bishop? What if we created an entirely new economic system based on the philosophies of Dr. Claude Anderson, Muammar Gaddafi, and Thomas Sankara? How many black Wall Streets do you think would exist today? And what if we created an organization in the transformational ways that Ella Becker did, or even a movement like Winnie Mandela did to end apartheid? How strong of a people would we be if a movement or an organization like that existed today? Now what if I told you that we've already started? So one day we were thinking, how do we fund a black freedom movement in a way that's both ambitious and empowering, yet transparent and accountable to the people? And then it hit us, the Black Freedom Fund, a fund that's for the people, by the people. The Black Freedom Fund will work like this. Each month, we will put out a plan for how and where the money will be spent. Then we, the people, will put money into the fund. Grassroots black organizations and collectives will be able to apply for grants through video, forming a level of transparency and accountability. A committee of activists, organizers, and movement elders will be tasked with choosing the grantees and working with them to ensure that they succeed. Each grantee will give monthly, quarterly, and annual reports back to the community, showing exactly who, what, when, where, and why the money was spent so we can operate in trust and keep building the movement our people deserve. Sounds dope, don't it? Yeah, we know. So let's launch it. Click the link, check out the vision, and put your coins in so we can continue that freedom work. The Black Freedom Fund is brought to you by the International Black Freedom Alliance, a grassroots organization started out of Ferguson, Missouri, who's dedicated to liberation of all Black people everywhere.